Uh, go check out uh, bindingchaos.com. There is a lot of tools. Uh, don't forget to provide your feedback. Just uh, jump uh, into development. Development. So we're using uh, the new GPT-4 model. We also have uh, GitHub Copilot helping with the code. And hopefully this will be a new application on bionicchaos.com. We have some code, however, it keeps reverting to using all sorts of libraries, fancy libraries, that I don't particularly want to use. So I want to only do local stuff. So it gave us this, just call it knowledge. And that will be the name of the new application. We have uh, Python, CSS, Tiny. No, we don't like, would like to simplify. Yeah, we have placeholders, obviously. And we'll see if uh, GitHub Copilot can uh, fill out those. Uh, we need bash commands. No, not to run. To know to generate all the no <laughs> files and folders. That's right. Okay, we already have that one. We paste and make this static. I don't know why it's not generating them all in a in a batch. But it's okay. Templates, index, requirements. That should be it and it really wants to write the app this one looks simpler than uh, what we have from uh, gpt4 why right so it keeps uh, using this uh, library didn't i ask it not to it's the previous python code Okay, it's still using that library and that's okay i'm wondering what it got to say for itself so we said we running everything locally using python javascript and html can we also minimize the use of any external libraries okay instead of using forms can we have a single screen application so the text box is visible on the screen at the same time we want the knowledge graph to be visible on the same screen Certainly. okay i really do not like buttons can we get rid of the button yeah so the way we work is uh, we get the gpt4 to essentially generate prompts for github copilot to complete the code because we can't code Ourself, it keeps now reverting to having those uh, subfolders. I ask you not to. Not difficult, is it? Yeah, it did the um, JavaScript in two goes. JavaScript in two goes it should be fine. We have the style CSS now in the HTML. Yeah, we don't have those folders. We just have, yeah, I need to tell the bot to fix it because if it's generating any more code, it will keep uh, stuffing this up. Okay, don't we need, isn't this, this meant to be Python, a uh, Flask application? Where's our Flask? There's no, okay, there it is, but um, yeah, we'll just give this. Um, we wanted to regenerate it from scratch. I don't know if it's a good uh, prompt or not. Okay, we're doing way too much in Python. Okay, now it's reverted to another library. It's not cool. Yeah, it corrected um, the folders. Yep, well, we did it manually, but it's good that the bot knows about it, so... If we ask him to regenerate some code that uh, doesn't make that mistake again. Oh, didn't we ask to 
do everything in JavaScript. Yeah, we should not have the button. First of all, from collection, special like container that the Python's general purpose built in container. What? Okay, I need some explanation on that one. Okay, let's just talk to it for a sec, see what it got to say for itself. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, first, we said that we are you only using uh, native code, so back to basics, but then you still importing default dict. Um, so, can you explain that bit? Why there is so much going on in the Python, whereas we ask to mainly rely on JavaScript and use backend only when absolutely necessary. Okay, uh, so it regenerated the code. It did exactly what we asked. So I don't know what about what all these people complaining about uh, hallucinations and the like. If you mm, exactly know what you want, it seemed to be able to uh, generate correct stuff. We'll put that up by in front because this is where we run the application from. So we updated index HTML, then we have a the JavaScript should now be longer. It's a bit longer. Okay, there's some weird things there. Any temp templates? It doesn't say templates. We'll check it in a sec. CSS stay the same, so I don't know why you uh, updated it. Uh, we can run it. Enter text here. Hello. Yeah, we want some text about the uh, EEG, right? Because that's what we're doing. And we should see a knowledge graph. If we wait a second, supposedly, check for errors. Uh, what's the problem? Cannot find style sheet. <laughs> okay, it's overlaid. Something that no errors. Okay, this can be improved a lot. Yes, we have the knowledge graph. However, a couple of things. Let's pop some prompts. Yeah, it's asking me questions now. What's the title? <laughs> uh, what's the name of the main file? What's the name? Blah blah. Okay, move on. No, move on. Uh, okay, let's leave it for a sec. Uh, one a good thing about GPT four. That we can uh, upload the image. Any issues? A uh, visualize graph. So that's a uh, JavaScript process visualized graph. Why is this function so long? Data relationship. Generate the whole thing. Hmm. Controller five. Let's add more. A text. First is an obvious you know what the size of the display uh, should be like. Pop in some text. Uh, epilepsy disorders. It's just repeating the text. There is Smith. It's one of the references. I mean, it's uh, slightly better. It's still. A overlapping like that. Overlapping. Let's just try this again. It's doing the job though. It's pretty promising. Yeah, it's still so much. A dynamic circle size. Yeah, don't really want to do that, but improved grid, the layout, text wrapping. It's still the visualized graph. Okay, the circles are all the same size. Hey, okay, make sure the two containers do not overlap. Make 
show the knowledge graph bits the container uh, we want it to dynamically change yeah now separate uh, containers that I could use some default text or something but <laughs> combining skepticism <laughs> but there's no connection between them yeah why do we have a box in a box uh, make sure that the knowledge graph appears when the page loads using the sample text it does work thank you github copilot this is better yeah on really widescreen we do want it uh, to adjust uh, horizontally it will do it uh, later currently it's better than what we had yeah it's funny i asked it to generate the uh, prompts for github copa it didn't generate the prompts but then it also generated the code <laughs> so, uh, so it's like saying i don't trust the uh, github copa so it's updated done typing okay we need that uh, get rid of that we add another another paragraph was another a paragraph there to remove it it should update yeah it updates well process text in javascript default connections if no explicit relationships are found okay that's a bit odd just connecting everything to everything is it we would like to revert a uh, back we don't want default everything connected to everything in the graph in the knowledge graph uh, also we want to make sure the knowledge graph is spread uh, you know in a circle or whatever not just the uh, square also potentially positions a uh, changing right okay we have a circular a thing going on we add another a paragraph okay it's updating so we have a knowledge graph updating live and we have update to the css text input that's the same likes columns and uh okay this is uh, better the, instead of the circular layout uh, can we do the layout uh, which uh, is normally used for knowledge graphs so like a tree of some sort so like a center circle spreading out we also want eventually to be able to move uh, things around in the knowledge graph yeah we want a traditional knowledge graph resembling a tree structure a hey, modify the javascript like layout to knowledge graph there is a relationship found okay yeah github copper is gonna help us is it i'm using the d3 um, let's regenerate that yeah copilot uh, can't do it i don't know how is uh, gpt4 so much better uh can you explain the code quickly uh, without generating any more code uh also can you touch on the layout of the knowledge graph I don't know why it's uh, always fixed. Uh, uh, any chance we can uh, make it more dynamic, a uh, tree-like? And also, at the moment, is it only finding capitalized words, or is it doing something else as well? Yeah, it keeps referring to the uh, spy sci thing. No, it's uh, just uh, extracting capitalized uh, words and uh, identifying re relationship so obviously it's not uh, doing much at the moment okay can we make sure the text appears uh, in the knowledge graph uh, for each component uh, i also do not see the connections displayed between the uh, different nodes Let's ensure we address both issues. 
text labels on nodes, and visible connections, links between nodes. Uh, first, we have a placeholder that doesn't look like GitHub Copilot is doing anything useful. This kind of works. We're importing one of the... This is the sample code, so it's just showing some rubbish. EG and self graphy. That's it. Uh, but if we paste the larger text, yeah, we get this. I don't know, some of the text there is not uh, uh, visible very well. Brain gate, enhanced function, something. AI. <laughs> One. EG, what's BCI technology? Like mirror. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's called mod uh, gates? Okay, it's, it's working better. It's quite a large text. Can get rid that. It will uh, regenerate. Should remove. Yeah, that's all this uh, individual uh, concepts. I don't know why. It's all related to AI. Great. E.g. the same blog. I was trying to. Uh, fetch a different one. This one's like everything is connected to everything. So it's like some sort of table or something, but yeah, I can't see it. Can understand the relationship. Would this tell you how good the blog is? I don't know. Let's try one of the uh, recent tools. Yeah, maybe I need more. A continuous uh, sentences. Oh, yeah. It uh, is about EG. Yeah, it's not very great, is it? Can't understand anything. Yeah, I can get rid of. Uh, right. I don't know if it's any better or not, but it uh, updates. Can move things around. It's kind of hard to find everything on this uh, canvas works really well yeah there's not much happening in this uh, blog those are the earlier uh, blogs written on the site wait so it's nice that it's updating like this real time but made some more changes duplicate uh, Make sure that each entity appears only once. Relation works based on co-occurrence of entities within the same sentence. Avoid overlapping text. Improve visualization. Dynamically adjust the display nodes and links more clearly. Better interactivity. Cleaner, more readable. Interactive knowledge graph visualization. The text label should be fully visible. Okay, what the uh, changes to the code have you made? Python is the full code. We have 40 lines. This is the same. Okay, JavaScript. I have 130 lines. This extra five lines. Let's see what it does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this was like everything related to everything it's one of the uh, references so yeah now it went away can you like untangle this no it's like one uh, sentence or something yeah I mean it's kind of useful let me know what you think Know why they are spread out like this. Yeah, I want to fix these two things. Well, the first one kind of can be improved. You know, the spread out on the on the canvas. The second one is obvious. I expect it to pick up handle zoom limits. Improve layout. Scale the font size based on the length of the text. That's handy. <laughs> if that uh, doesn't give you a headache. I don't know what will. Is there <laughs> anyway? No, <laughs> untangle. Where did it go? What? Uh, 
it was better before. It was bad. It's really annoying now. Um, no, the previous version was still better. But I will still uh, like to adjust the text size, make sure it's fitting into the node circle. Also, can we make sure the nodes are not larger than, say, uh, one or two words? They should not be whole sentences or too long. Uh, also, what else? Yeah, the nodes can be, the connection between the different nodes can be improved. There's a lot of like everything connected to everything kind of situation, which we want to uh, avoid. Uh, also, there's some loose nodes that are not connected to anything. Uh, how can we improve on that? Yeah, it made a mistake. Made a mistake. Yeah, no, it did import uh, everything. Sometimes it drops it. Okay, now we're back to the original thing. Okay, just get rid of it. What's the problem? Okay, can't find it. It's fine. Just uh, ignore it. If you can't find it, you should just ignore it. Okay, just remove invalid uh, nodes. And yeah, now you're repeating this stuff again. Let's try the oops, other text. Okay, now it's working. Clinicians, digital, adaptive, yeah, too much crap. I still lose nodes, quite a lot of them. Make sure I handle the filtering of relationship correctly. JavaScript text. Uh, being Dima, uh, regenerating the whole code. That's regenerating the same code. Well, the relationship, dynamic font size, yeah, that will be good. Truncate long text, remove loose nodes. Sounds good. It's repeated stuff still. Uh, where's the repeated stuff coming from? Well, I mean, it's coming from the text, obviously. Still loose nodes. Can't even zoom out that uh, to see all of them. Ali cheat, but uh, what helped before? Oh, <laughs> this node is outside the canvas. What? For real? Right, well, because I changed the zooming, but that should be fine. There's a lot of repeats. We don't like repeats. Hopefully it should just be able to pick up on repeats. Yeah, loose stuff. Yeah, so that's the, oh, that's the uh, article I'm working with. That's the one in the, the link is in the chat. Yeah, no prompts. I don't even know how to explain what's wrong. Hopefully the bot can actually fixing stuff or just regenerating code. Repetition of nodes, disconnected nodes, text length. Consolidate nodes, filter relationship, adjust text length. Sounds good. Sounds very good. The Python code. So this is a Flask application. We always telling it to primarily rely on JavaScript, but in this case, because we're using this spacey, wait, it was called something else. Spacey? It was in our library. Ensure that the nodes are rendered correctly and relationships are meaningful. Meaningful relationships. Sounds very nice. But you haven't actually changed anything, have you? Okay. Don't have repeats. That's the sample code that we have. This is one of the seem to be going in circles. Seem to be going in circles. 
is that uh, I can make, place that message as a prompt. Okay. Okay, it's working with the original text with a longer text. Okay. It's doing something. <laughs> Why? Ah, that's the water. Get rid of that. Yeah, so every time uh, you change the text, it will generate this graph. It will remove. Okay, we need to fix. <laughs> what? Where is it going? The impo. What's the impo? Like it. AI, BCI. Brain go. Yeah, just truncating. We don't want to just truncate. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, we can do better. It is better. It's one. Not very meaningful, is it? Uh, let's see what it says if we just pop in the brain screens. Is the developer relying on LLMs too heavily? Relying on LLMs like GitHub Copilot for generating code can be very helpful for speeding up development and providing inspiration or solutions that the developer might not think of independently. However, it's important to balance this with a deep understanding of the underlying code and concepts to ensure that the solutions provided by the LLM are correctly implemented, secure, and efficient. If the developer, one, understands the code generated by the LLM, two, regularly reviews and tests the code for accuracy and security, three, continues to learn and understand the underlying principles and technologies involved then relying on LLMs is a practical and efficient approach. If the developer finds themselves unable to understand or troubleshoot the generated code, it might be beneficial to take a step back and strengthen their understanding of the core technologies and concepts. Hey, okay, can we try something? We haven't tried this before. Uh, we have this web application that we are developing. So we have another AI that will be listening to your description and asking you questions. Is that okay? Yes, that's perfectly okay. I'm ready to assist with any questions your other AI might have. Let's begin. Okay, start giving a description of the whole application and the whole development process that we did so far. Okay, just give a quick summary. The other AI is listening. Sure. Here's a quick summary developed a web application that generates a knowledge graph from I'm ready. data. Please that share the summary when you're ready. Space extracts entities and their relationships from the text. The front end using D3JS visualizes these entities and relationships in a dynamic interactive graph. Key points. One, back end. Spacey is used for natural language processing to extract entities. Entities are consolidated to avoid repetition. Relationships between entities are identified and filtered to ensure validity. Loose nodes, nodes without connections, are removed. Two, front end. D3JS is used to create an interactive, force directed graph. Nodes are consistently solving a web application that extracts entities and their relationships from text using Spacey for natural language processing and visualizes them using D3.js in an interactive graph. Here are a few questions to better understand your progress and needs. One, how are you consolidating the entities to avoid repetition? Two, what criteria are you using to filter and ensure the validity of relationships? I'm ready to answer entities. any questions about our progress with D3 at JS and the overall development process. What would you like to know? All right, let's dive into some questions about your progress with D3 JS and the overall development process. One, how are you managing the dynamic updating of the graph with D3 JS when new entities and relationships are added? Two, what answer to question one, managing dynamic updates with D3.js. To manage dynamic updates of the graph with D3.js, when new entities and relationships are added, we are using the following approach. One, clearing previous graph. Before rendering a new graph, please go ahead and share the approach you're using for managing dynamic <laughs> updates with D3.js when new entities and relationships are added. Can we both do quick responses? Absolutely. 
quick response as it is. Let's start with how sure. you're managing Here's dynamic the updates approach we're using to manage dynamic updates with D3JS when new entities and relationships are added. One, clear. How are you handling dynamic updates with D3JS when new entities and relationships are added? To manage dynamic updates with D3JS when new entities and relationships are added, we follow a structured approach. One, clearing previous graph before rendering new data. We clear the existing SVG container to remove any previously rendered nodes and links. Data binding. We bind the new data, entities, and relationships to the graph elements using D3's data binding methods that data enter, that force simulation. We set up a force simulation using D3's D3.force simulation function. This dynamically positions the nodes based on the updated data. Simulation includes forces such as D3.force link, D3.force many body, and D3.force center to manage the layout. Updating elements. During each tick of the simulation, we update the positions of nodes and links. This is handled by the ticked function, which sets the X and Y coordinates for each node and link. Interactive features. We enable zooming, panning, and dragging by applying D3's D3. Thanks for the detailed explanation. It sounds like you have a solid approach for managing dynamic updates in D3.js. How is this approach working for you in practice? Are there any specific challenges or improvements you're currently focusing on? Thank you. The approach we've implemented for managing dynamic updates with D3.js is working any... effectively, but it has faced some challenges, which we are addressing step by step. What's working well? One, dynamic updates. The graph dynamically updates when new entities and relationships are added. This ensures that the visualization reflects the most current data. Two, interactivity. Users can interact with the graph through zooming, panning, and dragging nodes. This improves the user experience, making the graph exploration intuitive and engaging. 3. Data binding. The use of D3's data binding methods, dot data, dot enter, dot exit, helps in efficiently managing the updates without redundant re-rendering of elements. Challenging. It sounds like you've made significant progress with dynamic updates, interactivity, and data binding. What specific challenges are you facing, and how are you addressing them step by step? Can you provide quick uh, responses, a uh, touch on a, uh, we would like to try and fix the fact that not all the text is visible in the node. How can we make the nodes uh, shorter down to one or two words of uh, text? Did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get my last uh, re prompt? Repeat the last prompt. Can we focus on the text not uh, fitting the notes? Right. Reach the limit. So you reached your GP file. You need GP file to continue this chat because there's an attachment. Did it give me a timeout or? How long is the timer? Your limit will reset at 525. So it gave me uh, 35 minutes timeout. Ah, that's what happens when you overload the robots. They had enough. <laughs> we need the rest. The robots need a rest. Your yeah, script is not complete, is it? No text, wrap text, no text, text is there, like on top of the, the no errors. Right. My, my GPU is really going. Just remove the, the knowledge graph for a very large uh, paper. This must be a table or something. Could use cleaning up this text. If we weren't timed up, timed out by the GPT, it's not very useful. Ah, there's more. Um, yeah, this would need more testing. Just in our way, I guess, to review code. Except, uh, yeah, we need the. Uh, to make sure we're only using uh, meaningful words. This will need more work. And I'll see you next time. Bye.